Hey everybody, my name is Chris. I'm the Head of Customer Success at Xano, and I'm here today to walk you through a three-part series on how to take that idea that's just living in your head right now and turn it into an actual functional application using Xano. In this series, we're going to talk about designing the database for your application. So where's all the data that you were going to need to power this app going to live? We're going to talk about transferring data to your front end of choice. And finally, we're going to talk about interacting with data from other services. So I want to take a minute and just talk very briefly about the software development process. What do you actually need to have a fully functional application? Well, we need a front end. The front end is the user interface and user experience of the application. What does it look like? What are your users able to click on and interact with? We also have the back end. The back end is what powers all of the functionality for your application. So that is your database, where all of the data that your application needs is stored, your APIs and business logic that actually powers the functionality for your application, and then finally the server and infrastructure that holds all of those pieces together. Xano is your entire back end. So we give you a scalable database and a no code API builder so you can build that functionality to power your application faster. We're going to take you through this three-part series on starting from scratch and building a fully functional application. Before we actually get into designing our database, we probably need to take a second and think about what is our application actually going to do. In this example, we are building a loyalty card application. So think of just like an app on your phone that you can use to look up restaurants in your area and claim deals that are available. For us to be able to effectively design the database for this application, we need to know what it's going to do so we know what data we need and what kind of structure makes sense for that data. So let's go ahead and we'll just draw a little phone here and let's give our application a title. So what happens on the main screen of our application? Well, we're probably going to list some merchants that have deals available. So let's go ahead and put a few of those in here. Okay, so now we have our merchants populated. Now we are probably going to want a way for our users to be able to log in and out of the application. So let's go ahead and add a button here. And maybe that's really all we need in the main screen of our application. So how does a user actually claim a deal? That's the whole point, right? So let's go ahead and add another screen here. And we'll just use an arrow to indicate that clicking on a merchant name actually links to this next screen. Let's go ahead and put our title there as well. And we'll go ahead and grab one of these merchant names and put it right there. So now let's think about what happens on this page. What happens when a user actually clicks on a merchant? Well, they're probably going to see the deals that are available at that merchant. So let's go ahead and just say deal here. And we're probably gonna need a way for users to claim these deals. So let's add a button. Okay, so we have our deal. Let's go ahead and put a few more in here. Okay, so now we have the deals that are available to claim. What else would we have on this page? We're probably still going to want our login and log out buttons. So let's go ahead and place that there. Maybe we also want to list the deals that have already been claimed by this user. So let's go ahead and add another section here. And maybe we'll try to make these just a little bit smaller. They don't really need to be as prevalent as the deals that are available. Okay. So we have a very simple application idea here. It does exactly what we need it to do. And we have informed some decisions about the way we should be designing our database at the same time. We know what information we need to actually power this application. So let's actually, let's make a little bit of room here and let's think about our actual application database. So we're probably going to need a table for our user data. So we'll go ahead and we'll just call this users. So let's think about what information we're actually going to need from our users. They're probably going to need an email and a password so they can log in. And we're probably going to want their location as well. And that should be sufficient for our users. So let's move on to our next table. So obviously we need to store information about the merchants that have deals that are available in our app. So we'll call this merchants. So what data do we need for our merchants? We probably want a name and maybe a description as well. You know, this is kind of a fluid process. We didn't have a description 
in our original kind of design here, but maybe we want uh, merchant descriptions here. So let's go ahead and just uh, insert one of those and we'll see what that looks like. Okay, so now we've allocated a space for our merchant description in our original design, and uh, we can continue with the database. So we have a name and a description for the merchant. We're probably also going to need to know where they are located. So if a user wants to look up deals in their area, then we can only give them the merchants that apply. So this is an application where users can claim deals. So we're probably going to need a table to hold our deals. So what information do we need about each deal? Well, we're going to need an amount and we're going to need a merchant. And then finally, we are going to want one more table for this application. We need to keep track of what users have used what deals. So this is going to be our ledger table. And in the ledger table, we're just going to have two fields. We're going to have a user and a deal. So we want to know when a user has claimed a deal. We need to keep track of that. And that's pretty much it. We have designed the database for our application. It has everything we need. Now, something else that I want to talk about before we get into actually building the application, I want to talk a little bit about how these pieces of data actually relate to each other. It can be really important to visualize that before we get too far in, because we want to make sure that when we're designing our database, we're not repeating ourselves. What do I mean by that? So we have a whole table for our merchants here, but we also mention those merchants in our deals table. We want to ensure that these tables have a link to each other so that when we are working with the data inside of these tables, for one, we're not repeating ourselves when we're entering new information into our database. We can make sure that the merchants that are referenced in the deals table link back to the merchants in our merchants table. So when we're querying that data, when we're actually displaying it in our front end, we get all of the information that we need while staying as efficient as possible. So let's go ahead and we'll just draw a line here from our merchant field in our deals table to our merchant table. And let's talk about the ledger table. So the ledger table references a user and a deal. We're going to talk a little bit more about how querying this data actually works in another part of the video, but just at a very high level, it wouldn't make sense if we had a table in front of us and we just typed in a username and typed in a deal, and then that was it. We want the ledger table to link specifically to our users table so we can have those officially maintained data relationships that will make working with that data a lot easier. So let's go ahead and just draw this over to our user table. And then finally, we need one more because we also have a deal here. We want that to link to our deals table. So essentially what's happening here is this user information is going to come directly from the user's table. This deal information is going to come directly from the deals table. And this merchant information in our deals table is going to come directly from the merchant table. Okay. So that's it. There is our database. Now we can hop over to Xano and we can actually build it. So here we are in Xano. This is the first screen that you're going to see after you create your account. We need to set up the workspace that will hold the entirety of our backend. So the workspace name, we'll just call this loyalty card. We're going to be asked what front end we're using. I'm going to say I haven't decided yet and that I'm not importing data from another service. And we'll click get started. So now we can start with our database tables. If we refer back to our little drawing here, we need a user table, a merchant table, a deals table, and a ledger table. So let's go ahead and add those by just typing the name here. We have this option here to include CRUD API endpoints for the database tables above. We're going to talk about those in just a moment, but we do probably want to leave that check. So we are going to be building APIs to power our application. And Xano will actually give you some pre-built APIs so you can get started right away. So we're going to go ahead and leave that checked so we have those. We are given a few opportunities here to add additional functionality to our application. These are pre-built APIs to work with third-party services. We're not going to worry about those for now, so let's just go ahead and hit continue. We're asked about authentication. How will our users actually log into our application? Several options here for this example. We're just using standard email and password authentication. 
we'll, we can review everything before we go ahead and create our workspace. Okay, so here we are in our Xano workspace. We just get kind of a bird's eye view on this dashboard of everything that's happening in our workspace, as well as quick access to some resources to help you get started working in Xano. Because we're focused specifically on the database right now, we're gonna head right over there and let's take a look at our user table. So because Xano knows this is a user table because we enabled authentication at the start, we have some columns here that have been added for us by Xano. So we have a name, an email, and a password. But we need one more field here if you refer back to our original design. We also need a location. So let's go ahead and add a new field here. We can add just a text field if we just want like a city and state, or we even have the option to add uh, specific geography field types to this. For this example, we'll keep it simple and we'll just make this a text field and we'll call it location. So just like that, we have added a new field to our user table and we can start populating this with information right away. So I can just click to add a record. I'm gonna say my name is Chris. We'll do chris at email.com. We'll give ourselves a password and we'll give ourselves a location. All right, so now we have our first user in our application. Let's take a look at our other table. Let's take a look at the merchant table. So what do we need in the merchant table? We need a name, a description, and a location. So let's add a text field for the name. Let's add one for the description. And let's add one for the location. And let's go ahead and add a merchant. So I'm gonna add Pizza Hut, which of course has pizza. And location is also going to be Chicago. Let's go back and take a look at our deal table. So what do we need in our deal table? We need an amount and we need a merchant field, but we need it to relate back to our merchant table. So how does that work? Let's start with the amount by adding a text field. And so now we can go and we can add one more field, but this is going to be of the table reference type. So what Xano is going to allow us to do here is to choose a table that we are referring to, which is going to be the merchant table in this case. And you can see we have a new column here called merchant ID. So what happens if I click and add a record here? Let's say this is a 50% off deal. If I click into this merchant ID field, you can see I have Pizza Hut here, which was pulled directly from my merchant table. So we have now added the merchant of Pizza Hut uh, to this deal. We can see the name of the merchant here, but we can also see that there is this number one right next to Pizza Hut there. So every single record in your database is going to have an ID. An ID is a field that is maintained by Xano. It is sequential and it can never be duplicated. It's always unique. Each record has to have an ID. The reference is actually done by the ID of that record. We have the merchant name here just as a visual cue so it's easy for us to know which merchant is assigned to which deal. But the actual relationship between these two tables is done by the record ID, which means that if I was to pull some data from my deal table, I could pull anything in this related merchant record at the same time. And we're gonna do the same thing in our ledger table. So we need two fields for this table. We need a deal reference and we need a user reference. So we need to be able to keep track of what users have used what deals. So let's go ahead and say that the 50% off at Pizza Hut was used by Chris. Thanks so much for watching this first part of our From Idea to App series, where we take you through the entire journey of designing and building an application using Xano. We went through some basics about software development. We talked about what this application is actually going to do, and we designed a database to power our application. In the next video, we're going to dive into the APIs that will actually power the functionality of our application. So we'll see you there. Thanks for watching.